All right, so we left off with a login form. Now it's time that we make a registration form as well as a register view. And, and we're gonna do this using model form. Model form is not a whole lot different than the built-in form itself, um, but instead it uses a model. So like our user model or um, blog model, you know, so we've already seen model forms before as we've seen with the post form. So it's gonna be very similar to that post form there, but we're gonna be doing it for the user itself. And of course, remember, we're not doing a custom user model. If you wanted to do custom user models, definitely check out joincfe.com because we show you how to do it there. Um, but for now, we're gonna make a user register form and it's gonna be forms.model form. And we wanna give some space here. And I'll just declare class meta model equals to user. And again, that meta class, um, and it relates to form or admin, it has to do with anything that's not a field. So like a password or that password is a field, username is a field. And um, in meta, we also wanna say what fields we wanna use from the user model itself, not actually creating new fields, which we're gonna do username, email, and password. Cool, so that's all we're gonna do for the model form now. we. Now that we have this, we just want to render it. So let's go ahead and import this into our views for accounts, just like we did with the login view. And we're going to stick with the form.html. And I'm also going to have a title. So let's add a couple things uh, for our context here. Title would be register. And then the form is the user registration form or user register form, post or none. So request post or none. And then we'll worry about the rest in a second. I'm gonna add a context here and say form is form and then title is title. This context dictionary, we now wanna pass it into our render function. Again, all this stuff should be a little bit repetitive, uh, but now that we have this, let's go ahead and add this into our URLs for our main site here. So inside a blog URLs, we already have the register view um, imported, so we can just go ahead and copy one of the, either the login or logout URL and just change this into register. A lot of things that are definitely repetitive to what we've done, but it's something we need to do. So now we have register and here we go. So this is actually a user registration form. Notice it's saying username and it's required. So if I hit register, it shows me the different required things. Now in this case, I actually want email address to be required and right from the very start, I want email to be unique. Um, this is a little difficult because we're not actually changing the model for the user. Um, so these are default things, right? So the username is a default thing and it's default to being unique, right? It cannot be the same user. So I think we have one called ABC that's already registered and it'll say a user with that name already exists. Um, but also with registration, the, the real big thing that we wanna worry about is making sure their email address is correct because sometimes spelling errors happen um, so more so than making sure that they confirm their password twice or even their username, we're gonna make them confirm their email address twice. Um, and that's something that I think is really important to do in a form. And we wanna do this in, um, in a very simple way. It's just a matter of adding another field in here. So we'll call it email2 and it's forms.email field. And that this is pretty much what we're gonna be doing. And we're gonna add um, a label here and we're gonna call it confirm email. And then we're gonna go back into our, our page here and take a look. And what we'll see now is we have confirm email down here. Um, our password is not a input, right? It's actually showing the password, which is not what we want. So let's go ahead and copy the user login form, the password for that, and bring it down here. Uh, paste it and save. Let's go back in, we refresh, and what we see here is email address password. We type in the password, it's a password. Um, but we also notice that email address is not required, right? Confirm email is, but email address is not. So we wanna make sure that they both are required and also the ordering of these things kind isn't that great. So let's go ahead and copy the email again. I'll explain why this, ha this happens this way in just a second. We'll say email address and save it, we'll refresh in here. Um, we don't need to submit the form, but what we see here now is email address is now required and confirm email is down there. So what's happening is this is just overriding the default field that we have put in. And then email two is just an additional field 
that really is not going to make a difference to the user model itself, but it is an additional field that we can work with, which is kind of cool. Um, and as far as the ordering is concerned, we can just add in email to here, save that and refresh, and now it will reorder these things. So you can actually change, this is how you would actually change the order of how those fields would be rendered. Um, and, and like just like up here, if you change the order here, that would also be the same sort of thing. Um, cool, so now that we've got this, we have a registration form working, but I do wanna make sure that the emails match. And we're gonna be doing this with a method called clean. So clean email, and it's gonna take self. So first of all, we're gonna do email equals to self.cleaneddata.get, and it's gonna be email. So it's that first email. And then email two is gonna be the same thing, except email two. And we'll say if email is not equal to email two, we'll, we'll do raise forms.validation error, and we'll say emails must match. All right, and then other, otherwise we'll return email. So if it doesn't work out, then we'll just return the original email, refresh in here, and we hit register. Notice the fields are required, so we'll just make up some stuff. And I will first of all make a email not match, hit register, and it'll say emails must match. So then we just match them and put a password field. Notice the password field goes away. So it's still saying emails must match. And let's go ahead and take a look as to why. So we're gonna jump into our email stuff and we'll print out email and email two. And while we're at it, we might as well just print out um, self.cleaned data as well, um, just to see what that is. So let's go back in, resubmit it, and we're still getting that email must match. And what we see in the clean data is it's only giving us username and email. So let's just do one thing here, and I'm gonna just change the order of email to and email. And we'll try that again, hit continue. That, that goes away. And now what we see here is email to and email. Uh, right, so the actual order makes a difference to how this clean works. So if I change this down here to email two, we're gonna have that same problem and it's gonna say emails must match, right? Um, so now what we basically need to worry about, I'm gonna change this to email and then down here to email two. So the clean methods are gonna be organized in the way that they actually come through. Uh, there is another way to do this, which I'll show you in just a second, but as far as getting it right on the field, this is a really good validation error itself. Um, there is one more validation that I wanna do is check if the email actually exists already inside of the database. So I'm gonna make a new variable called email QS for email query set. And we'll do user.objects.filter and we'll say email equals to email. Uh, and then we'll say if email QS dot exists with the parentheses, we're gonna raise the forms dot validation error and say this email has already been registered. Um, so we're not really doing a whole lot of actual on the model validation, but it is for the form. Now, if you wanted this proper, you would build a custom model. So a custom user model that would have email being unique. But again, we're not going to be covering that here. Um, all right. So now that we get this, let's go ahead and get rid of this data here. And you might be wondering, well, what if I didn't know the order worked or what if the order or something with the order is not actually working? You can override the just clean method itself. So you can do self args and keyword args, and then you could do the exact same stuff. So you just go ahead and copy this, and then you can return the super, and this would be user register form self and dot clean, and then args and keyword args. So this clean method is gonna also do it, but it won't be right on the field itself. So if I comment this out, notice, if you remember the error, actually or the field error comes up right on the field. Now with the clean method, it's gonna be just slightly different. So if I change it and hit register, um, oop, let's make sure we're saved up and let's refresh in here and try another email. Let's do that again hit register, and now it gives us a non-field error, right? So it's not actually going to the field, but the validation is still there. 
Um, I'm going to keep it on the field itself. You can have it in both places, but it's a little bit redundant uh, to have it in two places because, well, the field error works just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out and leave it in there so you guys can use it at any point. Uh, but now that we've got this registration form, all we need to do is complete the registration process inside of our view. And that is fairly straightforward because we now have this form data, right? So we'll say if form dot is valid, as we've seen time and time again, we're gonna say user equals to form dot save commit equals to false. And then user dot set password we want to get the actual password from the form, so we'll do password equals to form.cleaned data.get password. And then we're going to use that set password method. This is a built in method for the user model. And then we'll do user.save. And then finally, we will do login the request and the user. And we might as well print out whether or not this user is authenticated right on side of the register view and then we wanna return something here at some point. So let's go ahead and try this out and we'll jump back in, register, and I'm just gonna do some random username again, oops. Random username and just paste these in here. Hit register and we're getting user object has no attribute backend. So we've got a little issue there, but let's before we jump into login, let's actually see if the user is saved by going into the admin. And we do have a user in here. The password's good, everything else is good. So everything except for the login function is good. So that might mean we need to do one more step just like what we did in the actual login view. We wanna do this authenticate one. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll use user. And I'll just say new user instead of user to not confuse it with the instance that we created. So we'll say new user. We're gonna log that in and the username is gonna just be user.username. Password can be the exact same password that we got on the form. And now let's try that again. And let's go into register and I'll try it one more time with a different username, of course, because we've already tried the other one. And finally we hit register. Doesn't look like anything happened, at least an error didn't happen. So if we go into terminal and now click on register again, we now see true, this user is authenticated. Cool, so that is a very basic registration view. Notice this authenticate was important for the login part. It actually authenticates the user and then you can actually log in from there. Um, so just by having the user model and trying to log them in, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. Um, cool, so this actually creates a session and does all sorts of things for us. All right, now that we have got this, let's actually do that redirect stuff. And I'm just gonna import redirect. And now after the login stuff, everything with the register and login, we're gonna return redirect. And I'm just gonna go to the home page or the index page on each one. There we go. And lastly, logout view, I will do that exact same thing. There we go. Um, so now that we've got this, I'm going to change one more thing about the blog is I'm gonna put the posts on the homepage. So now the homepage will be posts.url, but I'm gonna put this at the very bottom. So we save that and we refresh. And I'm gonna show you exactly why in a second. So now our posts are on the homepage. So now it's like officially a blog homepage. Um, if I put this at the very top, right? If I put this URL expression at the very top, it might work for us but let's go into like admin and it's now saying no post matching query exists. Whereas if I change this URL pattern and put it last, I will now be able to actually go into the admin. Um, so there's a really important reason for this is because of how URL patterns match. It's going to get the first, the, the first pattern that matches, it's going to stop there where this one, it doesn't actually have a pattern that matches. It won't stop essentially because of how our URLs are, right? So the slug right here is always gonna look for something like an admin. In that case, it said post is not found with admin. Um, anyways, okay, so that is our URLs. They're all set up. Uh, there is one more thing that we can test and that is comments. Now that we're logged in as a different user and I'll say, hi there, new user, post that comment and we see hi there, new user. Uh, pretty cool, so it says via ABC. 
We can go to this new comment thread and say hello there and reply. And now this comment thread, we should see hello there. Perfect. So it's actually working the way we want it to. Now our URLs also do not have posts in front of it. Instead, it's just a new slug, right? So that's pretty cool as far as how posts would work on a blog in general. Again, this part is not required, but I just wanted to do it to make this, this project actually just be a blog completely, and that's really what it is. Um, so now that we have log in and log out, we can, we can log out and do that. Um, the comments thing, we probably want to have a comment model that does not allow anonymous user. Um, so that's something else that we might wanna add, and that's little things like that we'll add in the next one. If you have any questions on what we did, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.